in our last session we saw how to pass parameters to the function that is being launched on a separate thread. In this session we are going to look, look into how to get return values from the function that is running on the separate thread. So looking at the first block of code here as you can see we are instantiating task template with a string pa type parameter. The string type is the return type of return value of this function perform work. So we are passing this perform work reference and then we are starting the task t and we are getting the result back in t dot result after the task is done. So if you go down here this is our perform work function which is a static function and we are simply returning a string success result from static method on thread. So we are returning this result and this result will be available on t result uh, in t result uh, variable. This call to t dot result will uh, block until the results are available. So until the thread ends and the results are available this will block. So the, going to next block, here instead of instantiating the templated task, we are instantiating, uh, we are calling rather templated start new method. We are passing the return type uh, parameter to the start new template and we are passing the same perform work reference and we are getting the results back in same uh, task dot result variable. Now the next block is different. Here we are using different te technique. We are instantiating a function delegate. It is a generic function delegate which takes the return type as a parameter which is a string and then we are assigning the function reference to this delegate and we are using the asynchronous uh, invocation pattern. So we are invoking this function, begin invoke on this function uh, this can take two parameters which we will look at later. Right now we are going to pass both of them null and then we call end invoke. This end invoke actually returns the return value uh, from the perform work function. So here we are calling begin, in, begin invoke and here we are calling end invoke and to the end invoke we are passing the I sync result value returned by the begin invoke and when we call this end invoke as you notice here it is returning the string which is the return value of the perform work function and we are appending received asynchronously through to this message that is returned by perform work so that we get uh, we added, identify the return value. Now going to the next uh, block it is again same function um, delegate but here we are calling begin invoke and we are passing a callback function called done and then we are passing the point uh, the reference to the delegate itself so if you go to the done function this is the callback function that will be called after the perform work is done so this delegate begin work uh, will call perform work first because that the func delegate has been in, in initialized with perform work reference so this begin invoke will call perform work first and then when the work is done it will call done and when it calls done it will pass this parameter whatever you pass in this parameter will be passed uh, here in the isync result parameter of the done. So when done gets passed we retrieve the original parameter from uh, isync result dot async state that returns us the original parameter uh, that was passed here. And we take this parameter and again call end invoke and pass so uh, using that func uh, delegate we call end invoke and pass the same async result parameter here and this end invoke will return a string value which is the return value of this perform work function and we append printed by callback so that we can identify the message clearly. This method, this technique of using function delegate we had never used before in last two sessions because this requires a return value and this is the first time we are dealing with the return value from the function that is called on a separate thread. So this is the new technique that is being introduced in this session. So this is certainly one more technique in our pocket to launch separate threads. Now going to the next block.
so far we have invoked all these threads on the thread pool but what if we want to invoke thread not on the thread pool but a new thread uh, apart from thread pool so for that we need to there is no way there is no standard way to get the return value so we'll have to involve some uh, technique to get the return value from a heap so somehow our worker uh, thread has to put the return value in a in a in a in a variable that will that can be accessed as a return value so here is one technique of doing that i am creating this class called my thread so let's look at that class so i'm creating this class and then i'm calling start on on that class and then i'm getting results on the in the result member of that class so let's look at the class now so this is the my thread class it has a result private variable called string and then it has uh, it contains a reference to a thread and this is the result uh, property and when you call get on the result it waits for the thread to complete and then returns the result now uh, we'll understand this once we understand the next part so let's go to the next part this is a start fun function on my thread what it does is it creates a new thread passes it the reference to the perform work member function and then calls a start on that thread and it puts the reference to that thread in the member variable thread and it calls start when it calls start the perform work will be called and perform work will put the result in the result instance variable of this of the of the object of this class and when the outer thread the other thread calls the result property uh, the get of the result property what will happen is this result property will first wait for the thread to complete and the way to do it do that is by calling join so it calls join so it waits here until the thread is complete and then it returns the result because the results will not be available until the thread is complete so this is one pattern we are using you can use similar there could be various uh, similar techniques to pass the results back and that result we are accessing here in the thread result and we are printing it out on the console so let's uh, build this now let's look at the error oops i think we mistakenly printed one character let's delete it and let's build it again and let's run it so this was the first second this was the third uh, received asynchronously and the then the fourth was received from callback and the fifth was using the instance method on the thread so all our return, all our techniques of getting a return value from the function on separate thread uh, executed successfully